top of the morning to you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much for listening. We love making these videos every week for you. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment. We'd love to hear from you and share with your single friends. If you're a middle-aged single looking for your very best match, does it feel like you're looking for a needle in a haystack? In many ways, it felt like that to us. I actually one day decided to put out a picture of myself in a green shirt saying, I'm looking for my lucky charm. I did that on St. Patrick's Day of 2016 in several singles groups and I thought, there's no way this is gonna work, but it's fun, I mean, I'm just gonna throw it out there. I did not know until several years later, that was the day her lucky charm entered her life. Yeah, we actually got a friend anniversary notice from Facebook on St. Patrick's Day. We wouldn't have known otherwise, so thank you, Facebook. That day, my lucky charm actually did enter my life, but I didn't know that at first. It certainly didn't happen easily. The whole year before, I'd been searching for the right person for me and without luck. So if you're in that place where you're looking and you're not having luck, it might find you. Timing plays a role. We were in and out of dating for most of 2016. You might not know you're lucky until you actually are. It seems to me that any mid-single who's had a previous relationship and has been jaded, disappointed, or felt rejected by an, another loving partner, we may feel hesitant to move into new relationships that present themselves, which can lead to some drama. And we had some of that. <laughs> But I want to say that when we're talking about luck, I like the saying that success is where preparation meets opportunity. We cannot control what opportunities come up. We can only control what we do and how we show up in a given situation. And that involves preparation. One thing that can help you get prepared is our book, Intentional Courtship which has a lot of focus on personal development for mid-singles. When we're single and we don't necessarily have the opportunity right in front of us to get married, we can expand the version of ourselves to our very highest being, create a life that is more and more joyful. That not only benefits us as single people, but it helps us be prepared for that opportunity to be in a good, healthy partnership when it does come into our lives. One of the things that I think we did to prepare was we were each on a personal development journey and in fact, that's what we connected over primarily in the beginning. We had the opportunity to share some of the things we were doing. We read scripture together and we would discuss what we were reading. We read other good books together and discussed those. So we were both preparing to be a better version of ourselves and I think that was very meaningful. The next thing is, of course, putting yourself out there. Now you can't control who's going to like you and who's not. You know, and a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to figure somebody else out so that they can make that relationship work. The most important thing is to be the best you you can be and then put yourself out there and see what happens. See who likes you. See who shows up in your life. Well, and some people may refrain from dating because they don't feel ready and it's possible they aren't. But it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. I'm just going to be part of a singles group and put out my positive, genuine self and see what happens. Before I sent Kathy a friend request on St. Patrick's Day, I had noticed that she made positive, intelligent, and constructive comments in the mid-singles groups on Facebook. I was impressed by that and, and impressed by her, and so I sent the friend request I couldn't control whether she would accept it. Thank you for accepting it. All I could do is put it out there. I could send her a friend request. I could send her a request to chat with me. And then let the chips fall where they may. I think a lot of us, to try to feel safe, we want to control everything around us. And in reality, we've got to leave room for God to take a hand. And that might mean things are going to turn out differently than we thought. But whatever way it turns out, that's going to be right. I accepted his friend request because I also noticed that he was constructive and positive in his comments. And that is something that can actually stand out in a very good and positive way in the sea of negativity that can sometimes be in those singles groups. 
So when you think about Kathy wearing that cute t-shirt that said, I'm looking for my lucky charm with the big smile you see right there, you might think, well, those two just got lucky. And maybe we did. We I feel lucky. We consider ourselves lucky. And at the same time, success is where preparation meets opportunity. The opportunity part of that was luck, or you might say it was divine destiny. Either way you look at that, the part where we have control is where we prepare and we try to become the best person that we can be and then put ourselves out there for other people to see and evaluate and see what happens. You never know what kind of wonderful friends you'll make along the way. We're glad that it worked out the way it did in the end. So we're both Irish. We met on St. Patrick's Day through Facebook. And we only know that because of Facebook friendiversaries. And because of that, we decided to celebrate our five year anniversary of knowing each other. Last year, I believe you got me this beautiful emerald ring. You've actually got me many wedding rings because we got our first in Africa. Right. And it seems like each one is important and special. And this one commemorates the day we met. <laughs> so when St. Patrick's Day comes along, think about our story. Think about the fact that it might be your turn to get lucky. Remember that any time is the great time to have more love and more luck in your life. Thank you for listening.